I was listening to a BBC radio adaptation of C.S. Lewis's Last Battle the other day with my family. If you're familiar with the story, you'll remember that dear old Puzzle the Donkey, who's always trying to do the right thing in his very simple way, is duped by the wicked and scheming ape Shift, who twists ancient wisdom and manipulates Puzzle to wear an old lion skin and impersonate the great Aslan. Now, Aslan was the ancient savior of Narnia and it is foretold that he will return again, but he hasn't been seen for years. Now, Shift soon becomes known as Lord Shift and appoints himself the mouthpiece of Aslan and makes terrible and awful demands on the Narnians. And the consequences are dire and only a few see through the wicked scheme. And as I was listening, I was wondering if C.S. Lewis had, in part at least, been thinking about this passage at the end of Matthew 7 that I'm going to share with you today. It certainly strongly reminded me of it as I listened. Essentially, in this passage, Jesus is teaching us to be on our guard against people who talk the talk but don't walk the walk. People who say all the right things, but just it's not evident in their lives. And he says, don't worry, because you can spot people like that by just getting to know them. When you get to know your, their character, you'll see. So if you find in their lives consistent evidence of anger or jealousy or lying or a refusal to take responsibility for what they've done, then you should be wary of them or certainly not model your lives on them. You still have to love them though. But if you find in their lives evidence of peace and joy and hope and life, then you're onto a good thing. The trouble with this is, is that it also demands of me and you to examine our own lives. I mean, how saturated with Jesus am I? How much do I reflect his love and his joy and his kindness and his patience? When people meet me, is that what they find? How much integrity am I walking in? What condition of my heart is exposed when I'm under pressure or disappointed or hurt? And the people who know me most, the people who get to live with me and taste the fruit of my character on a daily basis, what do they find? Do they find Jesus' saturated behavior or perhaps something less relationally palatable? Let me share the passage with you. Constantly be on your guard against phony prophets. They will come to you disguised as lambs, pretending to be genuine, but on the inside, they are like wild, ravenous wolves. You can spot them by their actions because the fruit of their character will be obvious. You won't find sweet grapes hanging on a thorn bush and you will never find good fruit on a tumbleweed. If the tree is good, it will produce good fruit. But if the tree is bad, it will bear only rotten fruit and deserves to be cut down and burned. Look at the obvious fruit of their lives and character and you will know if they are true or false. What would the church look like if we truly were good through and through?